Okay, so our very first thing we're going to do is fit in the support. So I've got my little dummy and I've got my support. Now, at the moment, that's got a point at the bottom end. And I'm feeling like that's not really very supportive. I've got, if I push that in, not only have I got a spike coming out of the bottom, it's also not as it's not all totally thick all the way down to the bottom. So I prefer to take the point off. Um, when you do this, just watch out that it doesn't fly. So I don't want to break anything or for it to go into your eye. Um, you don't have to cut the point off, but if you happen to have a pair of strong scissors, just support the end while you cut that off. Um, but to that, tonight, don't worry too much if you haven't got anything that you can cut it with. And then the idea is to push this through all the way to the bottom. So I'm just going to go into, into a hole. I'm just, I've got two holes here, one that's a bit more tight fitting to stop mine from wobbling around. And if you find that something, the, the tool or the, the kebab stick has actually pushed some polystyrene through, then just pick out the extra ball balls so that when this is upright, it's flush, it's not wobbling. All right. And this part here, which is quite tall still, we are going to trim that, but not until we've got his head on. So we're going to keep this the length it is just to make sure that we have actually got a tall enough support. The other thing to make sure is that this stick is nice and upright. So if it's not, you need to pull it out, correct it, and then reposition or push it into a separate hole. And keep an eye on it. So just turn it 360 and just make sure that you have got a vertical line of balance. It looks a bit crooked on screen because my camera is a bit tilted. OK, but if this is at an angle, then you can tell what's going to happen. Potentially, it's going to topple over. OK, now, once you've done that, the first thing I'm going to get you to do is put some glue so we can do we can do this all together all around your piece of foil that you've scrunched up or your polystyrene ball. So whatever you've got in the middle to hold. Now, someone asked me the question, can you use sugar paste? And I would say it's, it's, it's probably better not to. So if you haven't got a polystyrene ball, use the foil, scrunch it up nice and tightly and carefully pierce through that and then attach it with a little bit of PVA glue and leave it to dry for a few hours. The cocktail stick that's going through horizontally does not need any glue on it. It shouldn't pull out. It's just to give you a bit of support when you're um, pushing the legs on. OK, um, and of course, if you're giving this to someone, you need to let them know that the monkey needs to be removed from the cake before serving so that they do and, and that it contains inedible parts um, so they don't feed it to someone and cause a choking hazard. So um, one of the things I like to do is I work with a ruler when it comes to sizing. If you've got, if you'd like to work with a pair of scales, you can, and I can give you a rough weight on the larger pieces. But essentially, it's much easier for me to get you to uh, work out the ball of paste just by rolling it into a rough ball and then holding it on your ruler and the widest parts so of the diameter of your circle would be the size of the ball. OK, so here it's two and a half centimetres or one inch as a ball. So this is the first bit. And this is actually going to be um, coating most of this ball to hide the polystyrene. So that's what I'm going to show you now. So again, if you want to work alongside, you can or um, just wait until I've shown you this bit and then you can go ahead and have a go. So to warm the paste up, give it a good old twist, good old squeeze, and then a tight roll between your palms. Now your paste does need to have the CMC in it. So if you haven't already put the CMC in, then the quantity of dark brown paste that you've got, that 200 grams, probably needs about half a level teaspoon of CMC mixed into the paste. And the CMC itself, just quickly to explain, because I don't think everyone knows about this, CMC, uh, the, each letter represents the first letter of the chemical that this is made out of because it's man-made. Uh, we know it as CMC in the UK. In uh, Europe and internationally, the brand name Tylos 
is more known or tylo or tylose powder. You may also have heard of a product called gum tragacanth and gum tragacanth is the sap from a particular tree which they dry and that powder is a natural version of this gum and that is used in a lot of food to thicken and firm. So we use this to firm up the sugar paste. The sugar paste has got a lot of fat in it. It's got a lot of glycerin in it. The glycerin will stop the paste from setting completely. And that way you can bite into it. That's why it's okay to ice a cake with the sugar paste. But to make it into modeling paste, you need um, to add the CMC and that will make it firmer to work with and it helps set and hold the shapes. Okay, I'm just gonna let, there's two people trying to join, so let me, um, just get these guys in. So, let's just say a quick hello to Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan, you're okay. Hello. Hi, there, you okay? I've unmuted now, so. No, that's all right. Um, Susan, I, I don't know, you might not have realised that this started at seven, but you haven't missed much at all. OK, so just to explain what we've done. All right. Very, very briefly. Um, I'll just come back to myself. Uh, where am I? Um, what we've done is we've cut the pointed end of the skewer off, yeah. put it into the dummy or whatever you're using to hold it tonight. So it's right down to here, but not sticking out. And then we've put glue on here all around the ball, but not the sticks. Oh, sugar glue. Yep, just sugar glue. And then um, I've got everyone to make up a, out of the dark brown, a ball of two and a half centimetres. That's as far as we've got. Okay. Oh, great. <laughs> Sorry, life gets in the way, doesn't it? Not a problem. Okay, so let me just show you then what we do with this ball so you can just watch this and then have a go i'm just going to turn my light on so it's a bit brighter there we go now um you don't need to use this but if you want to you can use the end of your rolling pin and just press into this it'll just give you that initial press down and hollow or you can just go in with your finger and thumb to start with because what we want to do is make like a, a soup bowl so a little pot or cup, just using your finger and thumb to work your way around. We don't want this too thin, but we want this hollow enough so that we can wrap it around our little ball of our polystyrene ball or our foil ball. And this is gonna go on from the bottom. So it kind of caps his bottom off if you like, and then you can't tell that he's um, got a ball in his bum. <laughs> Um, so we're just going to press that a little bit more. Don't worry if it cracks a fraction on the top because it's not going to show. So I've got a little kind of bowl shape going on. Now we'll pull this back out of the polystyrene dummy for a moment and then just pierce the centre. And then we'll push that up. Now don't worry that this is going to overlap your cocktail sticks. Just be careful that you press, don't press too hard because you're going to find potentially that this ball will loosen on the stick. So all we're going to do is press all the way around. Just with your thumb, we're not trying to stretch it too much. We don't want to tear it because we want we really want to hide the polystyrene. This is OK if you've got a little gap here. But just use your thumb to gently press this on. It doesn't have to cover the whole polystyrene ball. OK. It can just come up as long as you know that when we make the body, the body's going to form a bit of a skirt and drop down onto this. And then everything looks uh, monkey skin colour. OK. Unlike chocolate paste where you can blend this, you can't. So you just need to use your fingers just to press on to make it nice and smooth. don't worry again if it doesn't go all the way up the only reason it would go all the way up is if it's quite a thick piece of paste i'm just working around the 
bit that's going to show is, um, is the bottom here, but not necessarily underneath. So if you've got a bit of a gap there, you could just close it, but it, it's not not a prob it's not problematic. So I'll just give that a bit of a smooth in the palm of my hand. Obviously, you don't want to stab yourself. Makes it quite a bit bigger, which is one of the reasons why we don't have a very big goal in there. Okay. So that's the base. And that can go back into your little holder. Bit like a conco, isn't it? Okay, so just take note of the position of the cocktail sticks. Now, whatever you've done, you're going to have to have gone in front of your main kebab stick or behind your main kebab stick with the cocktail stick. So these will either be to the front or the back. So for me, because the legs are going to be more to the front than they are the back, this cocktail stick went through in front of the kebab stick as you can see it. So this is going to be the front of the model. Okay, so whatever I'm going to do, that's going to be the front of the model. And if you want to, you can just you can just mark it. Just put a little just put a little dot somewhere where it's not going to show, just so you can remind yourself that that is the front. Okay. And I'm going to put some glue around the top half. You've probably got a little bit on your any exposed polystyrene anyway, but we're just gonna put some glue around the top half here because that is gonna help hold the body in a moment. A bit strange, I know. Hannah, does it matter if my little cocktail stick goes like uh, left up to right down instead? Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. I've actually I've done a couple of different options for the legs, one where it's at an angle and another one where it's dead straight, even though you put it at an angle. So you can have a look at the models later on and decide which one you like the most. Just going to move that to one side for a moment. I'm going to show you the body, and um, generally, to get the size right, I normally just pull out a piece of paste, get it roughly into the shape I want, and then I would hold it up against the model and just have a look to see how that works. And that's kind of my decider on whether I've got enough paste or not. And at that point, I would then start to warm it up. So for this character, as long as you've got 200 grams worth of sugar paste in total, including the bit you've put on the ball, then if you pull off um, a ball that would pass through the diameter four and a half centimeters, one and a half, one and three quarter inches. Okay, and this is going to be for the body. So you've got a larger quantity left and that's going in the bag so it doesn't dry out. So I'm going to give that a good old twist. So this warming up process is so important. Modeling is all about getting clean, clean, clean colors, clean finish. I'll give that a good twist. Nice warm up. And if you find that once you've tried to warm it up, you've still got cracks in there, then you can use your thumb to try and 
seal those cracks in and then go back to the ball rolling stage and see whether that will actually give you a smooth finish. If not, then you need to go back to the twisting. So twist, it's the quickest way to get a color through. It's the quickest way to apply or, or get combine the uh, CMC with the paste. And it's the quickest way to warm up. So then the squeezing will just warm the paste up, but also squish the air out. And then we're gonna roll really tightly between our palms. You're, you're almost like you can't form a ball because you're pressing too tight. Again, that's squishing the air out. And then we're gonna release the pressure between our palms and just get that into a ball. You might need to just move it on your palm a little bit just to keep it rounded. So everything that we're gonna to make tonight will start off as a ball and then we'll change it into the shape we need. So this we want in a kind of fat cone shape. So what I'm gonna do is just hold it on my palm and then with my hand, I'm just gonna tilt my hand up at the wrist. So this will make a sausage, this will actually make you a fat cone. And then this part of my hand here is the part that I'm going to roll on top of here. So if you use this paddy part, this is the chicken drumstick, it looks like a chicken drumstick. Use the paddy part to go onto one side of your paste and press down a little bit and roll side to side. So don't use your fingers, you want to use the palms of your hand. So what you're doing here is you're, because you've got the angle, when you roll, you'll find that it will point at one end and stay nice and fat at the other. Okay, so you've got a shape that looks like this. Now, very gently, we need to hollow out the fat end because at the moment, we've got an area that it's got to sit over, otherwise it's gonna to be too proud. So like a little uh, dress, we need to hollow out so it can sit on top of the first part of that. So if you have your rolling pin, you could start by giving yourself a little indent. So I've just bashed my camera. So just start off like so and then between your finger and thumb very lightly start to squish out the paste now if it's starting to crack and tear around here you're going to need to um, maybe warm it up again okay so we're just pinching out keep going all the way around hi Angie are you okay Hi Angie, you're all right. <laughs> nice to see you. Angie, um, I, uh, I don't know if you realize this, this lesson started at seven. So there's a couple of things I need to catch you up on in a moment, all right? So um, just watch for a moment and then I'll backtrack for you. Okay, you're not the only one. <laughs> That's me changing the time, sorry. It's because uh, it's, it, we need three hours to do this model really, but um, yeah, we can catch you up. We haven't done a huge amount, so don't worry. Okay, so once you've hollowed out your shape, then, uh, so this is the body we're doing, okay? Um, and we've rolled it into a cone and now we're just kind of hollowing it out so that it will sit on top of our little support that we've created. So that part there is gonna go on top of the ball that we've covered. So that's the bit I'm gonna show you in a moment, Angie. So we're gonna just push, or just position the, um, kebab stick right in the center in your hollowed out part but instead of just forcing it to go on try and twist so I'm kind of drilling the hole through and the aim is to try and get this out of the top but if you force it what will happen is it'll stretch and tear so I just need to get this to the point where it will actually come over there we go so it's broken through and then I'm going to carefully drop this down onto our model. Your um, little kebab sticks are going to restrict you from allowing it to drop down very far. And then uh, we're just going to gently stroke that so it starts to come over the bottom. Now, if you feel like it's losing its height, you can just come in here between your two hands, like so, 
and just just roll so you lift it up a little bit and roll just bring that down we've got to be mindful that um these have got to be on the side and we'll find our correct side in a minute okay now these are my cocktail sticks and uh my kebab sticks behind that so this i know is my front uh it doesn't really matter but if you have got a bit of a plump tummy on that side so if i turn it to an angle here you can see it's a little bit fatter which is ideal because we want the front to be a little bit fat we can make it plumper with the bib that part that we're going to put on in the moment but we've got this funny kind of overlap so this is where we want to use something like your bone modeling tool and we're just going to blend i could take this off if i want to i'm just going to use my bone modeling tool and draw lines down just to bring parts of the paste it doesn't have to be uniform Hi, Kat. I shall come back to you in a moment and show you the bits. There's a couple of you that I need to catch up. Um, just draw in all the way down. So this is kind of, it's fur, but what you're doing is trying to disguise the fact that you've got a join. And then we can pop that back into our little holder. Go back to have a look to see where our front is. So my cocktail stick is in the front and I'm going to just take, maybe um, I've just got the flat end of a kebab stick in here. You could use the back of the paintbrush. And I'm gonna go in and give it a belly button. Okay, so that's the front. Hello, Kat, you okay? Just, just unmute yourself for me. Did I get the time wrong? Oh, we, this one was seven o'clock, sorry. Ah, yes, I did. Um, <laughs> but it's okay because I can talk you and Angie through, and Angie, who's Angie? <laughs> name, Angie. Um, okay, so Angela, Kat, this is, this is where I need to get you to, okay? Yeah. Cut off your point on your kebab stick, if you can, with a pair of wire cutters. If not, don't worry. And push that into your polystyrene or whatever you're using to hold your character upright. Then if you can glue the whole of your polystyrene ball. Okay, do that bit for me. Well, I've already glued mine. Excellent. So glue the whole of the polystyrene ball. And once you've glued the polystyrene ball, take me a ball of dark brown paste that's two and a half centimetre diameter. So I'll just show you that again. Into a ball. Elongated cone. It's about six centimeters. Drop that back into your palm and then use the, this nice fleshy part of your palm to press that to flatten. It doesn't have to be too skinny. And we can just tease out that top part. So we've got a nice kind of bib shape, it's like a, it is a teardrop shape. Then we bring our model back in. And just looking at where the belly button is, so also where the legs are gonna go, we're gonna centralize this piece, stick it on up the top here, and then just gently press onto the model and then work your way very lightly. So everything's really light so you don't get silly finger marks everywhere. 
just get that on. Shape-wise, I always think of the penguin out of, um, what am I, what do I, who am I thinking of? Wallace and Gromit. I think of that wicked penguin, it's that kind of shape, isn't it? In fact, you could make a penguin quite easily and just put two eyes and a beak in there and you're done. So press that nice, get the top part on and you can see here because I had a little bit of a pot belly. I've got, an, I've still got a pot belly in there. Now you could keep it smooth if you want. And sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I like doing creases on things. So if you want, you can actually mark in some creases, but only do this if you fancy it. You can just mark in a couple of creases. It just makes him look like he's uh, got a bit of, move, but a bit of movement. And he's also got a belly button. So we just want to reinstate the belly button. So pushing in with the end of a kebab stick or with the back of a paintbrush and just give him his tummy button. What am I going to do with three monkeys? Okay. Sell them at the Easter fair. Oh, yeah. What fair? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Isn't there an Easter fair? No, we're doing the uh, picnic in the park instead. It's too much to organise, it's just a massive amount of work. Um, now I'm turning it completely on its back. So I've got the belly button at the front here and I'm going to go right to the other end, use my small end of my bone modeling tool and mark in where I think my tail hole should be. And I'm going to glue my tail hole ready. Now, if you've decided, so with the tail hole, don't glue it if you're planning to make your tail sit on the surface of the cake, because at the moment he's not in his finished position. So if you're gonna have that sort of tail, then keep a bit of spare paste and make that tail once he's on the cake. If you want to make the tail, I would suggest we have it so that it's touching the body, in which case, put glue in the hole. I someone suggested a chocolate button cake. I love the idea of doing chocolate buttons with the monkey. And then it could be an Easter cake, couldn't it? Mm. And you could even get the giant chocolate buttons. Potentially they could just, you could glue one either side of the stick and then it looks like he's sitting on a chocolate button. <laughs> That'd be good, wouldn't it? You could melt one side of the chocolate button, couldn't you? You could um, warm a skewer um, on a flame and kind of get a groove in the centre of it and then maybe run that uh, skewer across the whole surface of the chocolate button and immediately put it on there and put another one on the opposite side. And then it looks like you're sitting on a disc and then have lots of chocolate buttons all tumbling. <laughs> Yum. Cadbury's eat your heart, heart out. <laughs> Next year, this will be in Tesco's. I don't know, the sausage dog scene is particularly um, popular at the moment. Sausage dog, really? Yeah. Aww. Tesco's are doing a sausage dog <laughs> as an Easter egg. Really? No. So we've glued the tail hole. We're also going to glue 
in the area around both of the um, cocktail sticks. That is in readiness to hold the legs. Now, we, my glue is quite thick. We need thick glue for modeling, thin glue for flower making. Um, just work around the stick rather than on the stick because sometimes it can loosen the inside of the paste and then it could drop off. And just kind of anticipate the area that you might want to glue the leg onto. Um, we are gonna connect the leg in two places, but I'll come back to the, that in a little while. And the other place we can already put some glue is up the top here. Now I'm not gonna go right up the top because I want the monkey to look a bit taller and slimmer. And if we have the shoulders coming right up to the top, he can sometimes look a little bit hunched. So we're gonna come down by about a centimeter and that's where I'm gonna rub my glue. The reason for putting this on now is so that the um, glue has a chance to start to be absorbed by the sugar paste. And instead of being slippery, it's tacky and it holds a little bit more. But later on, you'll find when we start to put his arms and legs on, they have a mind of their own. They will slip and slide and you'll need to kind of keep repositioning them. And after about 10, 15 minutes, suddenly they'll hold. So when we put his limbs on, don't get frustrated because it's normal. It's normal that it all moves. So tail hole, legs, arms, all glued. But next, what we're going to do is put his head on. So clean off your hands and we're going back to the dark brown. If you can just give me a little thumbs up if you're okay to work on the head. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. So with the head, um, it's actually an upside down egg shape with the pointy end downwards. And I don't know again whether this is going to fit. So I have to kind of fashion the shape of my paste. I'll show you how to make the shape in a minute. But we've got this kind of upside down head shape. And I'm just going to twist that on. So don't do this, just um, hang fire for a moment, twist that on drop it down onto the character and then have a look to see size wise what it looks like. Now, when we finish this, we've got the muzzle, the eyes, the nose, the ears, quite a lot going on. So you might find that you don't need as much paste. So I've got too much paste here. So that little trial pays off because I can just now pull off a fraction. and. I kind of know that that's okay. So we'll just give it like a, each time, just a rough gauge, a rough go at it. So we're going to twist, get that nice and warmed up. That is a ball. And as a diameter, three centimeters, fractionally over. Okay. So give it a good twist. Squidge. Splat. So pressing nice and firm between your palms, make that spaceship shape and then roll. Tightly between your hands and then gradually release the pressure to reveal the crack free ball. OK, it's always a good idea to kind of give it another go if it's not quite right, because once it's on the model, you'll, it's there and you can't, can't change it. So into a ball, using the heel of your hand again, this little chim chicken drumstick, very useful. Pressing down a little bit on one side, so I've got an angle to my wrist, just so that I can get that kind of cone or egg shape. And the pointy end, the narrow end, is going to be his 
lower part of his head on the chin side. And we're going to take our model and position the pointy end directly on top so that the kebab stick is in the middle of your cone. It's a bit like a giant matchstick. And then we just slowly twist that on. And the aim is to get that kebab stick to come out of the top. The reason we're drilling this down is because we don't want to misshape it. So you can see now it's starting to pimple at the top and now it's um, come through. Just maybe reshape the point here and then drop that into place. Now, to be honest, it won't need any glue, but if you want, if you lift this up and just put a tiny, tiny amount of glue around that top, we don't want too much because we don't want it to show. Drop the face or head into place. Right, just flatten that just a little bit, okay. So at the moment, you might think mm, it's a little bit small, but actually proportionately, it's about right. Now, if you wanted more of an adult monkey as opposed to a, a junior naughty monkey, um, then you can make the head a bit bigger. Uh, but I think this is quite a nice size for this one. It makes him look younger. Now, when I go to the head itself, I can actually take my little stick this cocktail stick and find just over halfway point here. Just make a very, very light indent. That's just going to be a bit of a guide for where the muzzle is going to start and where the eyes are going to stop. And then we're going to take a little bit of glue and smear across just under that line you've made for the muzzle. So come right across. This is the muzzle here. And then just come up to the above that little mark that you've made and just give a little bit on the top, which will be where the eyes go. It's just a little crease, just a tiny little mark that's not going to show once it's all in. Okay, now what we need to do as well is get the head ready to receive the ears. So where you've put that mark is probably going to be where the bottom of the ear is going to go. 
So I'm just going to come to the side and maybe up just a fraction, support the head and push in my little back of my paintbrush, a kebab stick, any tool you've got. And then we're going to leave it up and down to make a little socket or hole for the ear. Now, just remember monkeys a little bit like humans have got their ears either side, not on their cheeks here. It's more just completely on the side, almost in line with the eyes. If you have a look at or can't look, but if you kind of consider where your eyes are, where your eyes are is, is the top half of your ear. OK, so this mark here and then up a little bit would be where we go. And then we can have another one directly opposite. So again, the same pushing in and rocking up and down to lever a nice little hole. And those two holes need a decent amount of glue. So we're just going to go into the socket. Everything we're preparing now. And then come in on the other side and do the same. So you can allow some of the glue to come onto the outside of that hole. And the idea is when the ears go on, because you've got glue, glue inside the holes, the, um, some of the paste when you press it will go into the, that and, and be held. Okay. And all of those items now are starting to get nice and absorbed by the paste and they're becoming tacky. So the first thing we're going to do is create the ears and then we're going to do the outer part, outer part of the eyes and then the muzzle. So we'll give the muzzle the longest amount of time to soak in because it's the heaviest one, the heaviest item. So because we've been working with the um, dark brown, we're going to carry on working with that to make the ears first. Well, with the ears, you don't want to make them huge because they're likely to drop off. So I'm just going to take a little ball of paste and to hold it up against the bottom. Kind of get a bit of a rough idea. I can also hold it against what I've already got there and these are slightly flattened. So I'm going to make that just a little bit larger and I'll give you a measurement. No bigger than a centimetre and a half diameter. Okay. So once you've made, it's like half an inch, once you've made one ball, Match the size by eye. I'll give those a good warm up. I just kind of pinch. The worst thing you can do with this paste is actually flatten and fold it. So anything you can do to squish the air out rather than add air in. Okay, into a nice smooth ball. Do the same with the other one. Now, when you do the next bit, if you find that it starts to crack open, you might need to re-roll the paste. Just get it warmed up again. If it keeps happening, maybe make one ear at a time, having matched the balls before you start. I'm just going to take a little bit of corn flour onto the large end of my bone modeling tool. And we're going to press in the centre. So I'm holding it with this part. It's going to make contact. The bottom part is going to make contact. So make the ball work in the centre, but then press so that you get like a teardrop shape. It's this part that's going to go onto the ear. So we can do the same on this one. Press to indent. Don't go too flat at this stage. Clean off your hands because you're going to transfer onto that 
paler brown. Make sure your hands are dry as well. And then we're going to take a smaller ball of paste of your caramel shade. And that's going to be about three quarters of a centimetre, no bigger. And just match the ball sizes before you start. Make sure they're nicely warmed up. So again, you can warm up, press really firm between your palms. Gradually release the pressure to reveal the ball shape nice and crack free. And then these are going to go into a bit of a cone shape. So all I'm doing is just putting that on there and holding one end, just pressing down on one end and roll one, two, job done. And they, as they are, are going to drop into the sockets that you've created, the indents that you've created. And again, with the big end of the bone modeling tool, a little bit of corn flour so it doesn't stick. Same as before, it's this part that's going to make contact with the ear. Go into the center and press down. Center, press down. This bit here is where it's going to stick onto the ear, onto the head. Okay, so once you've made your ears, they are ready to be put on. So I'm just going to take both of those, put them on there. The pointy end is going to go onto the actual head. It goes on like this. So just support the stick. Start to position that. Hold on to the ear, take the big end of the bone modeling tool, and pop it into the indent that you've already created. So you're going to push into the air, ear, so a little bit backwards, supporting with your finger behind, and then you're going to push in. So in and push in. He's going to look very weird for a short amount of time. In fact, until his muzzle is on, he doesn't really look like a monkey at all. He looks more like a mouse. So pointy end facing the head, push the large end of the bone modeling tool in. So it's the ball part of the modeling tool that goes in. You push back a little bit and then into the side of his head. Now what's happening is as you press into the head, so you're kind of pulling into the head, a little bit of that paste is wedging itself into the hole that you've created. And that is how come it kind of holds a little bit more. If you want, down the bottom here, you can just press a little bit so it becomes slightly more narrow, a bit like an earlobe at the bottom, if you want. You can keep it rounded if you prefer. And then if you've lost your 
kind of the hollow indent, you can always go back with the tool. Looking very weird. Now, of course, this theory behind the armature and everything that we're doing, you could make any character. You can change the height of that ball so it's even taller, you know, even higher up. So if you're doing the whole frog leapfrog thing, you could you could absolutely do that. The only thing you've got to do is try and find a way of disguising the stem. So three quarters of a centimetre ball times two. So they're matched for the uh, outer part of the eyes. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the, just one of the balls and just roll it just a little bit. So we've got like a fat cone. I'm going to do the same with the other one. Fat cone. Like a little bit like sweet corn pieces. And then if I put the two narrow ends together and just just gently press them a fraction so they kind of come in a little bit. And a little bit of cornflour on my finger because I think it's going to stick. And I'm just going to take, put my finger directly on top of both pieces and flatten them slightly. So it ends up with a heart with a little bit of a separation in the middle. And then to attach those, I'm going to pick them up and it, the pointy end is downmost. And you've got to line these up so the pointy ends come just below. Do you remember that mark we made in terms of showing how or where the muzzle starts and where the eyes start? So the pointy end here has gone just below that line because we want when the muzzle's on, we want uh, the muzzle to be just on top of the bottom of the eye area. And these need to be pressed on and it looks even more spooky now just just uh, we don't know what it is at the moment um now in the center here i've lost my line so what i'm going to do is just take my large end of my cutting wheel and just draw my line back in just watch out that you don't divide anything else you can press to broaden a little bit so they're not dead flat on there, they're kind of overlays a bit of a poppy out, but not very poppy out. I don't like poppy out eyes. And I just want to um, give it a little bit more glue. So just at the base of the eyes, and a bit more just to kind of, you know, belt and braces on that area where we're going to put quite a large lump of paste in a moment. So I'm going to make the muzzle now, and as before, I'm just going to hold up a piece of paste, which I think is uh, roughly the right size. And then I can think to myself, is it too big or small? That's a bit on the large side. So I'm going to take a fraction off, it looks a bit like schnorr bits. And then we're going to um, work out size for you. So we'll just take my ball of paste, measure that and it's coming in at two centimeters three quarters of an inch no bigger any bigger and it's going to be a challenge to keep on the face okay so we're gonna give that a good warm up so nice crack free ball and then i'm just going to use my hand flat and just the very startings of a sausage because what you want to do is create an oval shape okay and it's a sideways oval so the it's a bit like when you make the teddy bear um you want the width this way 
okay, the widest part is sideways. So we take our little oval shape, bring it to the face, overlap the base of the eyes slightly, and then hold your thumb at the bottom here, a bit of cornflower if you think it's gonna stick. And then you're supporting the back of the head as well. And you're pressing the bottom half on so you create like a wedge shape. So it's quite rounded at the top here, but it comes into a bit of a pressed angle shape down here. And then you do need to go gently, just all the way around the outside, just to help it stick on. Otherwise it might peel off. Now the muzzle, because it's quite heavy, you might find that that'll start to slide off the eyes, in which case you need to just keep pushing it back up. All right, but you can see the contour here. It's pressed on on this part so that you've got this like wedge shape. Um, I'm going to show again, I'll show the nose hole, the line in the mouth on the, on the, as a recording in a moment, but we'll just do the mouth. So we push in the tool, put my other finger and thumb, so whatever you feel comfortable, need to go either side of the chin and almost reach to underneath the chin here. So we just support the muzzle here and here. Pull, so the tool's in by about a centimeter. We then support the muzzle and pull the tool down so it opens the mouth up a little bit. And then with your finger and thumb on the other hand, whichever is more comfortable, you pinch the bottom chin as you drag, carefully drag it out because we don't want to tear it, but you kind of draw the tool out, which then gives him a kind of um, ooh, look and also because you've pulled out and pinched the chin, if I turn him sideways, you can see that he's got a bottom lip. Now what I will do is just re-show that. Um, so just uh, to recap, the eyes were indented using a cocktail stick and they're quite close to the muzzle. Then we've gone in with the cocktail stick and opened up the nose, use the cutting wheel, to cut down the line to where the start of the mouth is. And then I've just shown you the mouth. But let me go through that again on a separate piece of paste because it can be quite tricky to do this. It's quite useful to see it on a separate piece of paste. So I'll just do that quickly. So imagine this is my muzzle shape. It's already on the face. You start off at the top and mark in your hole. Just open that up. Then take the large end of your cutting wheel and draw down and the back of your paintbrush or something with an appropriate sized point to it. Push into the bottom of the hole, at the bottom of the line that you've made. Bring your finger and thumb down, draw the tool downward, and then your finger and thumb will close as you drag out your tool. So that will, if I just press it a little bit, you can see that gives us a bottom lip pull out. If you were doing a cat, a dog or a lion, you could then put, or a bunny, you could put little whiskers on it just by using the cocktail stick.
So this is how to pull off your balls of paste for your eyes. If you're not using brown, you'd be using black for this. So take a large piece of paste and put it to a point. And then between your finger and thumb, just close over the block of paste that you need and just gently pull that off and then roll it into a ball, drop it down onto the surface. And then you would do the same again, taking um, the second one down onto the surface. And when you've got two that match, then you're okay and ready to stick on. Now on the eye itself, because you've put glue on the eye, so you put glue on the eye and the nose, the paste itself has got fat and it's got glycerin in it. Well, the fat will make your finger a little bit sticky. So as you touch the ball, it should hold the paste. But because you've put glue onto the eye, that will be a wetter surface. So as you put your paste towards the eye, then it will take the ball off your finger onto the eye. And um, that's how you make them by hand. But I have used the, the, the two mil sugar pearls for these two here, just as a cheat. So three quarters of a ball, three quarters of a centimetre of a ball in the dark brown for his nose, into a ball, into a cone, so a pointed cone, and then we'll pick that up by the fat end, and we're going to insert the pointed end into his nose hole. I just press that a little bit. Just remember his muzzle might be um, a bit movie still. So press it in, but also then just give it a little sideways squidge so it becomes a bit of an oval shape. And if you want, you could put nostrils as well. I'm not sure I'm mad keen on the nostrils, but if you would like to, what you need to do is take just a little bit of the point off your cocktail stick so it's not too sharp. So there's still a little bit of the tapered end here. We go in under, so near the bottom of his nose, we just bring this up, come in on one side and press down. So I'm pushing in and then pulling down, push in and pull down. And then we just readjust. So you can bring his nose down just a little bit more. Uh, I think that needs to come down just a little bit more because um, his we don't want to hide his eyes. Just get that focused a bit more so you can see it. With or without, doesn't need to um, have the nostrils if you prefer not. So we'll start off with um, the legs. And again, what I need to do is take a blob of paste and just kind of get it into the shape I want. So I start with a ball and I'm going to do a little bit of a fat cone shape and then just roughly shape it into what I think I need for his leg. And then based on that, I know if I've got enough paste. So I'm thinking it's almost there, but probably a little bit too much. Now, trying to work out the sizing and everything, I'd go with your gut. Try not to get too hung up with measurements. I know we're working on measurements today, but if you can kind of work independent of that and just go by look, and try, because if it's not working, you can always pull it off. Um, but often, if you just continue with what you're making, you'll probably find that it will come out right in the end. So the size of that ball is no bigger than two and a half centimetres in diameter. Okay, so about two and a half centimetres in diameter. We need two balls the same size. It's important when you're making uh, anything that you've got to make two of to match the sizes before you start. Just keep an eye on your monkey as well, make sure that muzzle's not moving down. Just need to keep adjusting it. You don't need to pull it off, but just, just kind of ease it up. 
So if I match your ball sizes, and then put one to one side, and you can come back to that in a moment. We'll just create one leg at a time. So nice, warmed up ball. This time into an elongated cone. So he's got a fat thigh and then he's got a thin ankle. So it's not really, really long. Going to be about five and a half centimeters. Maybe just a fraction longer, five and a half to six centimeters. And then about a third of the way on the fat end, I'm just going to put my thumb and bend over the paste, okay? Our knee's gonna go in here. So what I'm gonna do is pinch side and side, like so. And then with my pointed fingers at the top, push. And that is going to create a little kneecap. Now, this part here is going to be closed up. So I'm going to fold it just a little bit. And to help me and give a little bit of interest, I'm going to take my cocktail stick and just press in a couple of crease marks. So that is going to sit, i show you on the model, just so you've got a bit of a perspective on this like so okay so keep that one to one side and remake for the second so i'll make the second one so you can see so same amount of paste but this time we're going to bend it the other way because of course it's the opposite leg so into a ball elongated cone but probably about five and a half centimeters long. Drape your thumb or put your thumb underneath the fattest third. Just give it a little bend. Take your finger and thumb either side towards the top. Press in just a little bit. And then while it's still on your thumb, fing pointing fingers to push. So that kind of creates that kneecap on top. And it's, it's how I would start to make human legs as well. But there's a bit more detail to those. So now I want to turn this over because this needs to be the mirror image. So I'm going to close it up and take your cocktail stick and press in the creases, just reinforce and then in like so. So we need, we've made our legs, we need to prepare our supports ready. So you either have pieces of sponge or if you use kitchen towel, if you fold lengthways, keep going. and then snip and fold, you've got a little bit of a support. Not perfect, because it can still move, but it will help if you haven't got anything better or just uh, maybe you've got like a shot glass or something like that. This is a little bit on the tall side so we can fold in the ends here, close that up, maybe overlap one. So you've got a bit of a triangle support and then that can sit 
here and it would support the foot a little bit while it's drying. Yeah, so you just need to play a little bit, but the yeah, these would be better. So I've got my first leg. I've taken a little bit of the point off my cocktail stick, so it's not going to come out the other end. And I'm going to point the knee up to the ceiling and just press that onto the area that I have glued and over the cocktail stick. Press the thigh on a little bit more as well. And then we need to close this up a little bit. Now, ideally, I want this part to stick on the body, but it's not going to let me do it. So I'm going to, I'm going to risk it. It's a, bit, it's a bit risky, this, because we've got the leg to go, the foot to go on. I'm going to risk it at that position, but we do, we run an awful risk here because the foot is going to, it's going to be just hanging actually. So that's no good. I'm going to have to twist this in. If I twist his leg in a bit, when I put the foot on, it can make contact with the body as well. You've got to be mindful that you know you can't just put a limb suspended out horizontally and hope it hope it'll stay. So this one here, the idea is that the foot would stick in this area. Okay. So we'll go to the other side. Just think this one through a bit better. Gonna make him squat a little bit like um what do you call it Yo yoga position. The other thing you can do on this is just mark in that just helps it fold up but it also gives it some more interest. But push that one on and again make the ankle part come roughly near the body so that when the foot goes on it's going to be able to glue to the body as well as the ankle. Okay. Now we need to get our supports in. Okay so just cut them to size. We'll take a little bit off here. That's resting. I haven't got our markings in there, so let's get those in. So one there. Always keep your off cuts because you could use them for something else. And this one's going to come in here. There we go. So our support is actually going to push it more into the body. And that's what we need. We need that help so that the foot will hold. Now, this one here is touching the body. So if we put a little bit of glue, just take care not to glue the sponge because otherwise it won't come off or hold fast. And then we'll just make the bottom of that leg make contact with the body where we've just put the glue. And that's going to give it a bit of reinforcement. So that is going to end up being something like the one we've got here. And those supports, I would recommend that you keep those in until you're ready to put this on the cake. And I'd probably reinsert them and uh, use them to support the figure in transit as well. So I'm just going to, I'll just roughly work that out. I'm just going to go back to check what size that is. 
And it is a ball that is no bigger than two centimeters. Okay, then match the ball size. Bob stopper. Or oh, how you like your Maltesers to be, but they're not. So we're just going to warm up one of those pieces of paste. And get that into an elongated, sorry, into a ball shape and into an elongated kind of skinny cone shape. So same as before, rolling. Keep going. Remember, I'm not using my fingers. I'm actually using this part of my hand. It's this section here that I'm rolling across. That's just the best um, kind of straight part. So we've got a nice tapered end here, which would be the wrist end, the fat end. Uh, and in this occasion is actually going to be uh, the top of his shoulder. Seven centimetres roughly in length, um, nearly three inches. Now, uh, like we did before, we're going to drape the top third. So halfway would be here. So we're coming just more towards the fat end. Drape the thumb over, so paste over the thumb, then pinch, quite a sharp pinch. And then with your fingers, push to make quite a sharp elbow. And while it's on the thumb, just rock sideways. So I'm kind of rocking it like so. And that is giving me a little indentation where the inside of the elbow would be. I've got this lovely pointed elbow shape. Now to get that one on, and we do these one at a time because otherwise they'll dry. Uh, I know that we've already got the glue on the side of his body here. That's going to be the fat end. Elbow facing outward. I'm just going to gently press this on. Watch out you don't make too much contact with the glue on the opposite side of his body. So pressing under his armpit and then work out where that's going to rest on his head. Take your glue, glue the inside of the limb and then position and hold. Now remember, he's got bones in his arms, so they are not gonna be curving. So let's try and keep them straight-ish. There'll be a bit of a curve in there, but not a huge amount because he's got a bone in his arm. And what will happen is this might start to travel down. So you need to check what's happening and up here because you've only just glued that and you couldn't possibly have glued it any sooner um it's just behind the ear um, you just need to be patient and gently very lightly so you don't make a mark just support the arm for a little while keep moving this part up so under his armpit just move that up until it holds it may move if it does you just need to bring it back to where you want it to be And then the other arm is created in exactly the same way. But it is coming to his hip 
it's kind of resting just above his knee, almost like he's got his hand on his hand on his thigh or hand on his hip. There we go again, we make the same arm. So that's your two, to say the ball that you've measured out, so the two centimetre ball warmed up. Nice, smooth, crack free ball using your chicken drumstick part of your hand rolling. Skinny arm tapering at the wrist. And that's going to be about seven centimeters, just under three inches. Now, this time we've got to go the other way it's the opposite arm. I suppose it doesn't really matter actually, it's when you stick it on you've got to watch out. So you just drape it over your finger. So we've just gone not quite halfway, just short of halfway on the fatter side. Take your finger and thumb, press, push, rock. I just like the really pointed elbow on this. Bring your model into play. Check everything else is not falling off. If things are falling off quite a lot, it's probable that you haven't got enough glue. You just remember that for next time. So we've got the fat end going on up the top here. So just press it on. Just press a little bit where his shoulder would be. And then if we take the arm roughly where you want it to make contact, which will be on, at the wrist side. Just make sure you've got that kind of opening like a teapot handle. Hold that in place for a few moments. If you want, you can actually take a little wedge of, this is too small for this, but you can put a little wedge in there to help it stay. You can do a do with a bit bigger wedge just to help, help it stay open. We've got a hand going on there and a foot, so it's just going to disappear. You're not going to notice what's happening down the bottom here. So now he's doing a Morecambe and Wise impression. As they say goodbye, dancing off the stage. My original design was actually a tree branch on this. If I just show you on a piece of paper, you'd have to change the, the center a little bit because otherwise the branch does look like it's coming out of its head. But can you see on this picture that there's a branch across the top here? And if as long as you've got that support stick upright and vertical, you could actually feed that off center through part of his tail, through his body. So the ball would be in here. Your cocktail stick would be across like this. And then you hit maybe the side of his head coming out through um, his ear. Then his arm would go on and he, you could even create some kind of branch up here. I don't know how you do that possibly with a bit of wire or, um, this is sort of what we're creating here, but I haven't made his arm come out of his head. It just looked a bit weird. So I've brought this down, but you can see how, again, there's a line, a central line support. Or one I did actually do for an article, if you can see that he's upside down. 
and the support the, the balls actually then hold in here with no cocktail stick coming out kebab stick ball kebab stick you could go kebab stick ball kebab stick ball cocktail stick so it's it's quite interesting how you can use the um, internal armature to create something that's bouncing around, a little bit of movement. So that's all starting to hold nicely. So I'm just going to clean off my hands and go on to the pale brown again, and we'll start with his feet. This, if you measure um, for the feet, no bigger than two centimeter diameter, two balls matched in size, and then if you come smaller, so a centimeter and a half, this is going to be for the hands. But we may as well get those roughly ready. Don't worry about warming anything up at this stage because you need to do these bits as you go along, otherwise they'll start to dry. So the hands, yeah, we did find that they were a little bit large, so I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller. So those are your hands there. And then uh, we need to make big toes, middle toes, little toes and fingers. So we'll start off for the feet, big toe, match the big toe for the second foot. And then use that as your guide, the largest toe. And we go smaller. So you need five in total, different sizes, right down to a little toe. And then once you've made your five, you can match them. So you've got a pair. And when we come to do the ones for the hands, it's actually the same. You've got a thumb, four fingers, um, but I'll make them smaller than the toes. So no need to warm these up because you're gonna to need to do that as you go along. Just get your sizes and you need them as ball shapes to match the sizes. So the thumbs slightly smaller. So if you do the thumbs first, then you know you're going smaller than those for all the rest of the digits. Is everyone okay? Has anyone got any questions about what, what we've done so far or what we're doing now? You're all still here. I've got the same number of people. <laughs> Everybody looks like they're still making, which is really good. It's just the quietest class. So, Anna? Yeah? See the size of the balls because I was having problems with my arms. Okay. So yeah, so you've got... Um, the feet are two centimetre matched and the hands are one and a half. Fabulous, thank you.
for you. So in anticipation of where the arms and hands and feet are going to go, a little bit of glue up here, a little bit of glue here, here, glue here, and glue here. So where you think your hands and feet are going to go. So we've picked up one of the feet main balls, which are the two centimetre balls. Really warm it up into a ball, into a fat cone, tap it to flatten, I'll show you the whole thing because then I can repeat it for you. Just watch this maybe. Bit of corn flour so it doesn't stick. I'm just gonna um, peel that off my hand. My hand has gone a little bit hot. So we'll just get a little bit of corn flour on there. There we go. So you tapped it to flatten and now we're gonna take the big end of the bone modeling tool. I'm going to press in two markings that just will become one because we're going to blend them together. So we're going to push the bone modeling tool in here, then there, hollow out the center to bring it down to where the heel is. This is actually the bottom of the foot, which is the bit that's going to show he's hollowed out. Then pick it up. Take your cocktail stick, push in at an angle on the side and open up like you did for the nose hole. This is for his big toe. Leave a gap and come up towards the top here and mark in four further holes for the toes. Take your paintbrush, put in some glue. If you've got a fine paintbrush, use that. I've just got this silly fat brush, but so I have to be quite careful with what I'm doing. Then I'm going to take each of the balls in turn. So you've got one row of varied sizes. Start with the biggest one, which will make the, make the big toe for you. So just warm that up in your, in your hand. Get it onto your palm and roll. Sometimes if your hand is dry because you've got corn flour on there, it's difficult to get it into a ball. So into a ball, into a cone, just like you did the nose, pop that into your glued hole for the big toe. And then you work your way down the sizes. So next largest ball that you've made goes in. Next. Just press them in. Next one. And then the last one. I'll just push that in there. Okay, so there's your Big toe, little toes, cute. Now, here, just under, we're going to press in. If you think about your own feet, they kind of go in before you get to the curve, the, the um, heel. So I'm just using the side of my finger to push in under there. And if you want to, you can press in some little crease marks. And monkeys have crease marks on their feet and so do we. And that one is ready to go onto your figure, but we're going to make the other foot first and then we'll stick them on. Um, when you do the other foot, you've just got to remember that the toe has got to be on the opposite side. So you've got this one, which is one foot, and then the other one, the big toe is going to be on the inside. Just try and think about where your big toes are or where your thumbs are and they're the inside. You haven't got one that's like that or like that. The thumbs are on the inside of both big toes on the, on the inside as well. Surprise. 
that. It's, it's surprising, it's difficult to remember, but this is the back side, so the underside of the foot, the sole of the foot. So ball into a cone, tap to flatten. You're not flattening it completely, you're just not making it super round. Then we take the large end of the bone modeling tool, press, press, just, it's only because the tool's not big enough. You could use a ball tool, that would, that would give you the whole thing in one go without having to worry, but then you'd have to change tools because you don't want it as wide, you don't want that indentation as wide down the bottom. So this time we need to take the cocktail stick on the other side, push in and open up for the big toe, and then come further up, opening the four further holes. We're going to go big toe, next size, down, down, down to the smallest toe. Put your glue in, always glue because it won't, if it's not sticking, it's often because you've forgotten to put the glue in. And then you can start to shape your little balls. So if you want to, you can make this quicker just by forming all of them into a cone shape before you stick them on. But if there's any time delay, then do them one at a time. So if you like to work slowly, then do them one at a time. So the biggest one will go on first. And then we go down in size. And just push them down a little bit as you attach them. And then if you remember, we go in here with the side of your finger just to kind of close that in a little bit and narrow before you get to the sole. You could actually make baby feet like this. It'd be quite cute. Maybe the big toe would be in a different place for a human. So pushing in with the cocktail stick to get a little bit of a crease. So cute. I put a bit of extra glue on the tip of his ankle and on his tummy. And now I'm just positioning the um, so it's making contact to the tummy and his uh, ankle. If I turn that round, you can see it's just touching. Now, at this point, I would suggest you reinstate that support a bit further forward, just so it helps hold. So it doesn't have to support the foot, it just needs to hold the leg in place. And then I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to put a little bit more glue on his tummy side here and on the tip of his foot, a little bit on the ankle. Take the other foot. And that is going to sit on as well. So if I just put my finger behind, I can find the ankle pressing onto the tummy because I know I've got glue there. That one come a bit higher. Hold it in place for a few moments, reinstate the support, and then we've got both legs on. <laughs> you can tilt the heel further forward if you want to bring the toes forward or back, depending on how you want them to curl. Sometimes it's quite nice if one of them is like tipped back. So it's like a child would have, you know, like a baby 
or a young toddler would have their in excitement they would have their um toes kind of peeled back if you like just watch out because these have a tendency to move and fall but after a moment or two they should hold And then you're going to make the hands in exactly the same way. So I've got my two main hands. So you can decide um, whether you put both hands in, depending on whether they're visible. It looks like he needs his hand because it's like, where has he got his hand? Um, so this time it's like a more of a fat cone, or you could actually keep it rounded if you want to, but I just, I'm just going to make a little bit of a fat cone. Tap that a little bit to flatten. It's a bit cracky, so we're just going to re, re roll that. If you think about it, this has been out for quite a while now, so it's started to dry in the air. So I'll just get that fat cone to flatten. Remember as well, when you look at your own thumb, the thumb is quite low down compared to the fingers that are long. So here we can open up the thumb hole, a little bit lower down, get your markings for your four fingers. Put in your glue. And if you want, you could in then, I'm not sure it needs as much, just a little bit for the palm. And then you're ready to put in your thumb and your fingers. And um, maybe make these longer so they're defined or compared to the stumpy toes. Your thumbs and your fingers could be just a little bit on the longer side. So again, just do one set at a time and just go down in size just for ease. We won't think about what the middle finger is doing and which one's longer, which one's shorter. We won't worry about that. Make sure you've got your glue in there. bring the fingers quite close together I feel like I want to pinch this so I've got kind of a bit more of a so it's just going to close in a little bit on that bottom side like that and then repeat on the other side Ball fat cone, tap to flatten. And this time, remember your thumb will be on the opposite side.
Again, we can indent that just a little bit. Not too much, not as much as the um, toes. Make your digits longer. Pinch that bottom part so it becomes a little bit more narrow. Just keep, just keep a check on your feet because my one of my feet's dropped off. It could be there's not enough glue on there. So if you can see where it's making contact and that you think that is the option, just add a little bit of glue and then kind of hold it there for 30 seconds or so just to help it hold. To trim the stick, if you've got a thick stick, I would suggest you trim it at an angle so that you've got like a, a thinner, pointy, more pointy. Hold on to the excess while you snip. Uh, and you're going to take it down to about half a centimetre. You can have more than that if it's a thinner stick. But if you think it's going to be a challenge to get the banana on there and not have the stick poking out of the banana, then um, uh, trim it tighter to the head. Then I'm going to put a little bit of glue onto the stick and back onto the area where I feel like I want my hand, which is on the wrist and the head just before the stick. And um, the thumb that's got to go on that, the finger that's got to go on that side, the thumb is going to face the opposite side. Okay. And um, I'm going, if, if we've got a bit of movement in here, which we might just still have, I'm going to curve it a fraction because he, he wants to be holding the banana or at least resting against the banana. So I'm going to sit him on like this. And once the banana is on, I can go back and just tilt the hand forward onto. It's almost like he's going, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, all right, so that, that's how it's attached at the moment. He's waving to you. Now, the other hand, debating with myself, I'm feeling like I want it to hold his tummy, maybe coming in like this. So you've got to think about where the thumb would be if he's wrapped around, you know, if he's just holding on to his stomach like so. Or if you feel that looks a bit awkward, which actually now I'm looking at it, I feel it is. If I turn it round so that I've got the indented part, I could have it just quite comfortably slotted in here above his foot, as long as you don't think that that looks silly. So just have a little play and see where you want that hand. And then you can add in a little bit more glue wherever that's going to go so that we can hold it, we can attach it. If you want to as well, oh no, we can just use the um, bone modeling tool just to press that on. So I'll get 
I get his hand on like so. And then as you can see, I need to replace his arm. The hand, I kind of know I've got the angle that I want on there. So I'm just going to leave that until we've made the banana. And while you're sticking yours on, I am just going to try and reinstate his foot. Part of the reason this is all falling off is purely because I keep turning it and wobbling it. So when you're making the model, just try for the least amount of disruption and hopefully things will stay where you want them to. This is being very naughty though. A very, very naughty monkey. Come on, play ball, be nice. Now we are going to overrun by about 10 minutes. I hope that's right. I know it's late. I do want to show you this banana and I do want to show you the um, little bush. What I might do is I will show you the banana from start to finish and the little bush because they're not difficult to make. And then I can stay on for a little bit, but if you need to go, I appreciate that. Um, but at least you've got it um, on record and also you've seen it made. So I'll just get my color paste ready but if you're going to make alongside me you need to just clean your hands off because uh, you've been working with the brown and you now want to go on to white and yellow for the banana quite straightforward to make this doesn't take too long and then I'll just show you one bush. I haven't actually got any green colour coloured up, so I'll show you the bush in brown and then you'll know roughly what to do with it. Okay. So the banana, you want a one centimetre ball of white. And then probably just kind of half a centimetre to three quarters of a centimetre balls times five in yellow. When you peel the banana skin, one of the students this morning very kindly counted the number of layers that you peel back. There's five sides to the banana skin. We'll start off with the one centimetre ball of white paste, give that a good warm up. Get it into a ball shape. And then roll it into a sausage. And roll in a little bit of a point on both ends. It becomes a bit of a torpedo shape or banana shape. Really straightforward. This is like when you were a kid working with Play-Doh or plasticine, making food for your picnic and for your teddy bears. Sa jam sandwiches and tarts. That's what I used to like making, jam sandwiches. And then my mum would get really annoyed because I mixed the colours, wasn't allowed to mix the colours. And I wasn't allowed Play-Doh either. I was only allowed plasticine. So ball of paste rolling. If I roll this with my finger, I can get the sausage. Now, if I curl my finger slightly, so from straight to curl, and line that up and roll, you'll get a point at both ends because you've got a slightly curved finger. If you can't do that, then just roll both sides once you've got the thickness in the middle. Now, a bit of corn flour if you think those are going to stick, but you want to flatten those and that will become the outer part of the banana skin. And you'll do that with all five. So warm your paste up first so it's not all cracky. 
Mau ke Enzo tuh. Mau ke Enzo a sausage? It's cracking. Bend your finger slightly so that it becomes pointed at both ends. Give it a little press. Peel off. Keep going. So once you've got all five pieces, what you can do is start to line them up. So I haven't got any glue on here at the moment, but I'm just overlapping the bottom half of maybe the first three banana skins, like so. And then you need a little bit of glue in the center here. Pop in your banana. Use your cutting wheel or a knife to kind of help bring up those layers onto the banana. And then a little bit more glue for the last two. Now, don't worry if your skins are not the same thickness because when you look at a real banana, I don't like bananas, so I'm re reliably informed that some are thicker than others. Some skin parts are thicker than others. So now we've got this all wrapped around, I just need to use my finger and thumb here to pinch this to a little bit more of a point. You could pick this up to do this. So just kind of round this all off down the bottom here. And then Use your cutting wheel or a pair of scissors just to kind of square that off slightly. And then start to curl. And you can have different degrees of curl back. Just give that a little bit of a squidge down the bottom. So that is your banana skin. Now, the one thing I'm not going to show tonight, but that is if you get a little bit of black petal dust with some alcohol with a fine brush or some of your paste color onto a fine brush, you can mark little black marks on the joins and at the base. If you look at a banana skin, you can see that it's got darker bits where the skin peels. So you could definitely paint those in for more detail to make it look more realistic. So that's your banana. I'll just show you where it all could go. Oops, his foot's come off again. It's the only thing that keeps coming off. It's always one thing that keeps coming off. So his banana, it's going to go onto the stick. So because that's quite a thick stick, I feel like I want to pre-drill. So I'm looking at my banana. This, this curl forward is going to be at the front. So at the back here, I'm going to take my cocktail stick, or you can use a spare bit of cut-off kebab stick, drill in a bit of a hole. A little bit of a hole in there. And then that drilled in hole is what you can push onto your um, 
sticking out a bit of kebab stick. Just open it up just a little bit more. Okay, so now he's got banana skin on. Can you see the, you can see a little bit of the stick here for the moment. Fraction more glue, always more glue if you need. And this is where his hand will come in now. So we bring his hand up. And uh, in his anatomy, I have no idea how correct that is, but it's he's kind of supporting the banana at the back. And here, if I wanted to, I could actually bring his fingers forward, oops, which would um, make it look like he's trying to grab the banana. Now on the um, the model from this morning, what I did, I can bring this in a little bit closer. I don't necessarily have to do it on this model because I can't see the stick, but I could see the kebab stick in here. So I've created three tufts of little hair, little quiffs here to disguise the fact that I could see the, um, kebab stick so I'll just show you I'll put I'm going to put a little bit of glue in front of the banana because it looks a little bit central it looks like it's growing out of his head and all you need to do is take tiny little pip sized balls of paste and just take tiny 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 little pip sized balls of paste like this and roll that quite a few times so you end up with this kind of really small kind of hair like cone this is how I make hair when I do little boys and girls and make them fringes and things like that so just three you probably do it and you could pick all three of them up, put one beside the other, then take the other and put that on top. You've got like a trio. And then you can put that onto where you've just put your glue. Now, if you rest it up against it, and if you're careful, you can take your little cocktail stick and just give it a press down the bottom to secure, and then turn the pointy ends down towards his face. If I turn that, you can see it. And he's got a thumb finger missing now. Oh. Patience. So the very, very last thing I'm going to just show you quickly is um, how to make the little disguise 
for his kebab stick that is between his legs. Don't forget his tail. Oh my God, his tail as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hannah, I'm really sorry, but I've got to go, okay? So um, finally, last two bits, the tail. Got his tail. Uh, do start with a two centimeter ball of paste. Nicely warmed up. And then we're gonna roll it into a sausage. So just nice flat hand and roll. What you're trying to do is work your way up and back down. Try and keep it even thickness. Now, um, you can always shorten the length of it, but monkeys have got quite big tails, so long tails. It's probably about nine centimetres long and thickness wise, half a centimetre. OK, and it's half a centimetre all the way along. Now, something like this, if you are going to be transferring this onto a cake and you want the tail to dangle down, you do not put this on at this stage, you have to put it on once you get to the point where it's ready to go on the cake uh, and he's on the cake. But if you, so all you would do is glue the hole and then you can curve it and dangle it. Which is quite cute, especially bearing in mind you're trying to kind of show off the gravity defying part. It makes them think, oh yeah, he is raised. Um, failing that, if you want to do it and be able to walk away and not worry about forgetting the tail, then you can attach it to his body. So what I would do here is about two thirds of the way up, put a little bit of glue, pick up his tail, having attached it into the hole, which has already been glued. And then if we curve it, just hold that in place on his back. but you need to glue higher up because otherwise it's just gonna break off. It's not, um, you can't really open it out too much doing it like this. So now he's got a nice curvy tail, which will take a short while to kind of set and hold. Okay. Promise very last thing now, which is the, um, disguised to go up the pole here. Now, if, if you remember how we made the little bits for his little tufts of hair, you could, or the banana skin, you could do different shades of green and actually just attach that to the pole directly and just have a tall, thin tuft of grass. You don't have to have the kind of um, hedging that I've created on my model. Uh, but if you do want the hedging on, my model I'll just show you how I've made that quickly and then uh, we have all the detail everything's done so I'd start off with a ball of paste that's maybe two or two and a half centimeters in diameter into a ball into a fat sausage then you tap it to flatten it peel that off your hand and with a cocktail stick, come in from the top, just on the side there and press in. And then flatten so it flares out. So that would be one part of the hedge. And then you could do the same on the other side. You can make clouds like this as well. So of course this would be maybe a pale green and you can do a dark green. And that piece you can curve as well. And that could then, once this is on the cake, be slid into place to disguise the stick in the center. And you could have one taller one so it goes up as high as it needs to to disguise. Have some at the front and some around the back. So you've got this kind of effect here. I've carried that on around the cake, but you don't have to. 
And there you have your little monkey with bananas. Obviously, I've only made one banana.